3, Magandang umaga, magandang araw, magandang gabi. Hello internet kai vegans, ako po si Rachel, your favorite Philam fangirl. And today we are talking about Filipino American history and the reason why we have ethnic studies today. This video is an ode to San Francisco State University and UC Berkeley, pretty much the spark of it all. And we're going to talk about the history of how we got to where we are today. There is still room for improvement. There is still room for growth, for ethnic studies. But we always want to understand where it all started, right? Or at least I do. I'm going to take you all the way back 55 years ago in 1968. <sighs> okay, let's set the scene. So we're in San Francisco. There's a bunch of students. They call themselves the Third World Liberation Front. And they got together and said, hey, we don't have a lot of representation. We don't have a lot of representation. We don't have a lot of support in the education, higher education system. What they did to counteract that was create objectives and demands for what they would like to see in their world. And I love that. I love that they got together and they were like, this isn't right. I don't feel represented. I don't feel like I see myself in these spaces in higher education, so let's do something about it. And the reason why that's important to me, at least self-reflecting within Phil and Fangirl, is because I feel like I'm constantly doing that with the brand Phil and Fangirl and with the journey that I'm on with learning about my Filipino American culture and history. And these are all things that I was not taught in my education system from elementary to middle school to high school, even through college, because I didn't even realize how much access to this type of curriculum was available. And if anything, the curriculum probably wasn't available at all in the spaces that I was in. So I am going out of my way to research more and learn more and then just share more about what I've learned. I want to give the disclaimer that I may have some information wrong. It's not perfect, you know. As far as credibility goes, I do do my research from educational sites, from the Googles, um, and then just whatever I could find on the internet to try to pull the pieces together. So if you do have certain fact checks or certain details about the history that I'm ever talking about in any of these podcasts, please feel free to comment below. Uh, it's always nice to get that kind of input to find out if, you know, something was off or if there's a correction because this is, this podcast is not only for me to document my journey, but also for you to make sure that you're getting the right information. Okay, let's get back to it. So their main objective was to basically see more of themselves, more of their heritage in the higher education that they were in. The TWLF, Third World Liberation Front, demanded equal access to public higher education. They wanted more senior faculty of color. And then they also wanted a new curriculum, new curriculum, new department, new ethnic studies college that would embrace the history and culture of all people, including ethnic minorities. At this time, San Francisco was the perfect place for it because one, and this is just my assumption, because one, San Francisco is a major, major location for immigration. It's, um, you know, if you think of immigration and people coming into the country, into the United States, you think of the Statue of Liberty in New York, and then you think of San Francisco, or at least that's what I think of. And so in San Francisco, you have this mixing pot of all these different cultures coming from the other side of the Pacific, which is most of the Asian countries. So that's basically what the TWLF was aiming for. And pretty much the movement through all of this since 1968 uh, resulted in the creation of many different student unions and 
groups that were very centered around these ethnic minorities. There's a long list of groups created, but the one that I want to highlight mainly is the Philippine American Collegiate Endeavor. That's PACE, P-A-C-E, which is now Filipino American Collegiate Endeavor. And it's so crazy to me because I recall PACE existing at my undergrad, which is Cal State Long Beach. After a few months of the movement beginning and gaining traction, in November 1968, SFSU actually closed down. The first College of Ethnic Studies was established at San Francisco State University on March 20th, 1969. It really only took that first step of people getting together, supporting each other, and taking action to pretty much spark the next wave of strikes, which happened at UC Berkeley. In 1969, they were inspired by SFSU one year later. And when I say they, I mean the activists at UC Berkeley. And they initially proposed the creation of the Third World College, similar to the one that was established at San Francisco State University. Spring rolls around in 1968, and the Black Studies proposal was given and then you see these slew of proposals of asian american studies native american studies uh latino american studies all of those kinds of proposals for what the curriculum will look like was created and submitted these proposals sparked the fire and laid the groundwork even more from san francisco for this third world college and it's crazy to think about how this all went down about how very much Hunger Gamesy and Katniss Everdeeny it is. Third World College, what they were proposing for, demanded a curriculum that was designed for and taught by people of color. Again, like San Francisco. Now forward to January 1969, TWLF Constitution was written and I believe at this point, both San Francisco and Berkeley are working together with the Third World Liberation Front. So it's a new year, it's a new dawn, it's a new day. January 24th rolls around in 1968, and then the strikes begin. In January, these strikes started to get extensive coverage in media. And we see that in a ton of different archival newspapers, and these strikes were located in Sprawl Plaza. Sprawl Plaza is kind of like the student activity center or student activity area. And it's a part of campus that has seen a lot of activism, a lot of activities, events, music, whatever you want to call it. Um, and it all happens there at UC Berkeley. This is also where the strikes happened for ethnic studies, for the starting of the Third World College. Get this, it took two weeks for the TWLF strikes to gather people's support, gain traction, get the media it needed, and the resistance was seen and heard faster than Filipino chismis in your family. February comes around in 1969 and Manuel Delgado from the Mexican American Students Confederation arrives at the TWLF rally. Also in February, the Cal Teachers Association voted to strike. And through February, this is where we start to see the violence. The strikes did become violent, especially when the chancellor of Berkeley at the time requested that Governor Reagan declare a state of emergency and bring in police from elsewhere. <sighs> okay, so this is where it gets really sensitive. For, uh, if you are sensitive to all of us, please tune out. We can You can see any of my other less sensitive videos. Strikers battled the police that were brought in and requested, uh, and the police occupied the campus. The pressure increased on the chancellor of UC Berkeley to endorse a third world department. Note, not a third world college, okay? Third world department. And this department will be known as the Ethnic Studies Department, including Afro-American Studies, 
Native American studies, Kano studies, and Asian studies. This image I'm showing here right now is an image of the leaders of these groups. So you see three men, Richard Aoki, the Asian American Political Alliance leader. There's Charles Brown, the Afro-American Student Union leader. Manuel Delgado, Mexican American Student Confederation leader. And I guess I'm gonna point this out that it sucks that they didn't get a photo or maybe they did get a photo and they just didn't publish it on the pamphlet, but <laughs> they didn't get a photo with the one and only woman who was among the top leadership within the TWLF. And she was, let's say her name, so y'all remember, it's Lanada Warjack. And she was the head of the United Native Americans. Wish we could have seen that. And if there is any other literature about it or photos, it, I, would, I would love to see that just because more for the women representation of it. Uh, it became a win for UC Berkeley because they got the Department of Ethnic Studies and the four undergraduate programs like I listed earlier. But the TWLF, Third World Liberation Front, was not entirely happy, let's be real. They were going for a college. They wanted a full-on college and I saw the proposals. They actually had full structures from like the dean to, you know, the types of classes and the faculty and everything. And it was just like a cute little org chart. They had all of that together in their very detailed proposals, yet didn't get to get the college stood up. So I understand the frustration there, but it was still a win in that they were able to get something. <laughs> I know that sounds terrible, but it's like, I feel like that's just a testament to what it's like to be a minority in the United States. It's what it's like to be Filipino American in the United States. I see that in the way people handle their personal lives, the groups, what they ask for, where they feel like, okay, you know what? I'll take what I can get. And then they take what they can get. And then they're like, just I'll try again later and ask for more later. So that's just, I don't know. That's just my two cents. I That's my opinion. But a win, like I said, is the fact that Asi African American studies were created, Asian American studies, Chicano studies, and Native American studies. And then going back to how this all relates to Filipino American history, Filipino American history just pretty much was looped in with the Asian American studies. So even though I'm going over this as if it's just a timeline and telling you in chronological order for the factual piece of it, I think we should take a moment to really think about how emotionally taxing it is for these students to want something so bad and fight for something so bad because they feel so underrepresented, not seen, they don't feel safe, they don't feel heard, they don't feel part of a society that they help build. And it's just so heartbreaking to see them still get as far as they could and then fall short a little bit. You know, it's like, you get this, but then not all of it. The 1970s and 1980s, the US economy, actually suffered during a 20 year period due to events like the 1972 energy crisis. And the unemployment rates at this time was reaching its highest point since pre-World War II. The world at this point, the world, sorry, the United States at this point is going through unemployment rates, funding is going down, cutbacks are happening. If cutbacks are happening, of course it's gonna affect the education system. As a result, these cutbacks were made in California, which hurt the expansion of ethnic studies programs. We go through this entire strike, violent, long, terrible. These are college students. These are, these are 20 year olds. These are 30, 40, 50 year olds, faculty, just hoping that they could have a piece of just, ugh, representation, right? A piece of, hey, I am part of history, only to have a couple years later, the funding go down and have that be a detriment to expanding the ethnic studies 
college or the ethnic studies department. But needless to say, we have to count those events as successes, baby steps, mainly because the TWLF, the Third World Liberation Front strikes, were more than the demand for the curriculum. It was about being underrepresented cultures in education. It's about seeing everything around you be Eurocentric and not really getting another lens of education. And it was also about challenging the oppressive systems and structures of power in education and society. So the impact of all of this, really, (laughs) the reason why, I don't know why, I don't know why I'm like running out of breath just talking about this, but because, (laughs) well, education is like a big thing for me. And I think I've mentioned that before. The impacts felt by the longest, most violent student strikes in US history has positively impacted this continued fight for representation to this day. We can see it in how much it lit a fire in people like me, people like other districts and people in education trying to do the right thing. What are those impacts? Did you know that by 1993, over 700 Ethnic studies programs existed in the United States because of the strikes, because they started it in San Francisco and Berkeley, and then it spread all over the United States. 700 ethnic studies programs. That's amazing. The biggest ES programs were at UC Berkeley, UC San Diego, University of Washington, and the University of Colorado Boulder. In another area, meanwhile, in 2014, El Rancho Unified School District in Pico Rivera, California, became the first school system in California to adopt a measure that requires students to pass an ethnic studies course in order to graduate. So, you know, all of those prerequisites, prerequisites, (laughs) all of those prerequisites when you're in high school, it's like, you know, two years of a language and two le- something levels of math and reading, writing, arithmetic and, and economics and government and all of that, they added ethnic studies. I love that. <laughs> uh, and then in late 2014, uh, the LAUSD, so... Los Angeles, where I am, Los Angeles Unified School District adopted the ethnic studies measure and the board pretty much voted to make ethnic studies a graduation requirement as well. Then by 2019, every LAUSD high school student um, needed to take a class. I mean, to this day, I think it's still active, needs to take a class in ethnic studies to graduate. So it's just making it a requirement earlier on rather than making it a additional degree that you could get in higher education. October, 2021, and this is historic. And it's weird to think about it being historic because it was only two years ago, but we're gonna make sure to highlight it. In October, 2021, California became the first state to require ethnic studies in high school. We're not in districts anymore. This is the entire state. That's that's amazing. And it's also amazing because I know that my child is going to be part of this education system where it is a requirement. When I said earlier that this was an ode to San Francisco State University and UC Berkeley, I guess this is what I like what I tried to say was just Thank you. We can thank the students of San Francisco State University and UC Berkeley for lighting a fire and never letting it stop to this day. We can thank all of the people who were inspired by the Third World Liberation Front strikes because their sacrifices were not unnoticed. And we see that today in the most recent success with the legislation AB 101 being passed in October 2021. I just want to thank you for watching today's podcast. If you are still here to the very end, I'll see you tomorrow as we continue to celebrate Filipino American History Month this month of October. Thank you again for your support. Paala!